better than you. I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. I'm twice the angler you'll ever be. Well, I'm half the angler you'll ever be. What? I don't, I don't know. I got scared. You're really into it. Just trap my rods. I'm hungry. Did you make the sandwiches today? Ham and cheese. Welcome to b -Lat's Travel Vlog. Uh, that's probably not what it's called. But anyway, have fun. Sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle. It's the tournament vlog. You already know, anytime we have a tournament, you're gonna have some type of foolery that goes on. Something's gonna go down. I don't care if it's your boat equipment. I don't care if it's your dog throwing up before you leave. I don't care if there's a roof falling in on your house or your wife acting crazy. Something's gonna go wrong every tournament. Well, this time it's the weather. Even though we're coming down to Florida where it's supposed to be hot, it's supposed to be 85 or 90, and you're running around with sandals and you got your, you got your locks out, right? I'm supposed to, wind's supposed to be blowing through my hair this week. You see that? That, that ain't what's gonna happen. We go from 85 degrees the two days in practice to a low of 30 four degrees in central Florida. So you already know that the tournament is going to be not what you expected. Nothing's probably going to work like how it did in practice. So knowing that I've got some contingencies built in place from pre-practice and practice. I'm really glad that I came for pre-practice because I've got a few things that I can do. I've got options for this tournament. I did find a shad spawn. Problem is shad don't spawn and 34 degree temperatures in Florida. Now, if we were in South Carolina, it'd be a totally different thing. I know all my friends in Minnesota and New York are like 34 degrees, it's not even that cold, Brian. It's not the cold what you're worried about. Listen, in Florida, 34 will kill you, okay? It will, it will have you, it'll put you to sleep. So, ain't gonna be no shad spawn. Out of the two things that I found in practice, shad spawn and flipping pads, most likely, I will have to rely on flipping pads because I know that the shad spawn is probably not going to go off with, with what we got going on weather-wise. The baits that I think is going to work that's going to play for me this week here at the Harris Chain, we're faced with some pretty unique conditions. So, I think I'll be able to catch some, maybe throwing a crankbait around the edge of the semi grass. This is one of the baits I've been using this week that I really like. This is a scamp. The scamp, it gets in like the one to three foot range, but it comes through grass like butter. It's a tool that I think I'll, I'll probably use a good bit this week. Then I'm also gonna throw a jerk bait a little bit too. Uh, I found a little patch of hydrilla that I'm looking to work over with a loco special. This has probably become like Literally my favorite jerkbait throw. Then of course, you already know me, I'm gonna be doing some flipping. So I'm gonna be using the Z-Man Bang Sticks, black and blue laminate color. And I'm gonna put that guy to work around some lily pads. I also have a little bit of a shad spawn going on. So I'm throwing this guy right here. This is just a Z-Man sling blade spinner bait. And I'm backing it with a unique trailer. This is actually a salt order soft plastic here this is the swimming trout tricks that i'm using for a trailer but it gives a good booty shake so tandem willow leaf half ounce spinner bait and then i'm also backing it up with a real cool swim jig of course shad pattern because it's the shad spawn other thing i'm throwing on the shad spawn is just a swim jig and i'm tipping my swim jig with one of our turbo craws here in white of course because it's the shad spawn Is the wind staying the same? Yeah. Let's look at that. It's the wind. It's gonna make it ten times worse. If the sustained winds aren't bad, it's the gusts that are bad. Oh, it's supposed to gust today. Yeah. The sustained winds are only at like ten to twelve, which isn't terrible. If it's actually ten to twelve, but it'll probably be more. Out of the north? Yeah, out of the north. But then it's showing gusts of up to like well, first thing in the morning, I think we should have gusted up to like 24. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought 
so I guess like 20, mm-hmm. 25. Yeah. Mine said north winds 10 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. It was like 30. 30? You going to give me 30 this morning? <laughs> You're going the wrong way. Dude. Wrong way. So, yeah. So, look. 8 a.m., 36. 9 a.m., 37. 10 a.m., 43. It's really not warming up very quick. Yeah, then 12, 54. Oh. Man, this is, you gotta make the right decision today, because if you don't, man, all bad. I'm not really sure. Uh, today's like with the weather that we got today is the most important day. The most important day. <laughs> Dale Earnhardt, do it for Dale. I'm gonna come back at 3:30. I'm gonna come back at 2:25 for you, though. All right, y'all have a good day. I think I'm. I think I'm gonna stay. I, yeah, trust my practice. It wasn't bad. Um, I could ride halfway down through there and change my mind. But I think I'm staying. Um, especially if I see a few birds on the bank, I'll stay. But if I don't see any birds, I might keep trucking. But you, you got so much more experience. You can get up there and move around. You know, I didn't practice there. I know what I'd want to do if I get there. I just, I'm not sure that they would do it first thing in the morning, you know? We'll see. We'll see. We shall see. So I've got some decisions to make of whether I want to make an extremely long run. Um, you know, there's plenty of fish right there in Harris, really close, or I could take a really, really big risk and run to what's called Lake Apopka. It takes about an hour and a half to get there. On this chain of lakes, there's Lake Harris, there's Lake Denham, there's Lake Griffin, there's Lake Eustis, there's Lake Dora, there's Lake Beauclair and all the canals that connect all these lakes. So there's a ton of acres to fish, right? Um, for whatever reason, I found one of my most solid bites in a popka. But I have to be careful about going there because a popka is really wide open. We've got pretty much 15 to 20 mile an hour winds today. And so I feel pretty certain that that's going to be trashed. But if I get there and I find somewhere that's calm, I might be able to wreck them, but I may need to stay in Harris with the weather the way it is, extend my fishing time, I can find protected areas to fish. I got like, dude, I got all these things in my mind that could play out, that could work or they could fail. There's, there's, I can think of three different ways that Apopka is the way to go today. I can think of three different ways that Harris is the way to go today. And so I just need a minute to just like set in my truck and just think about what I'm trying to accomplish for this for this tournament, for this day, and how I'm gonna make this event work for myself. In practice, now we had like a couple inches of rain, 30 degrees this morning. There he is, there he is. It's gonna work, y'all. It's gonna work. Get dag up good too. It's gonna work. <laughs> Decisions, baby. Now that ain't a giant, but the decision to stay right here in Harris, already paying off. Found the shaft ball in here in practice. Dude, the, the, like that right there, for my confidence, I made the right decision. I was just worried that with all the coal, that they weren't gonna, like they weren't gonna do what they're supposed to do. But first bite within the first two casts of the morning, it's gonna be good, y'all. 
that's all I wanted to see was like that you know that they would do this we're good with it being cold I was just really curious to know if they were gonna the shad was gonna stay and if the fish were gonna hold I don't see any birds here in practice there's a bunch of egrets up there on the shore eating the shad and stuff. And I don't see any today. And I almost kept going. They hadn't even finished calling boat numbers and I got one. Those short strikers like that, I can catch them. There he is, big. That boy did the move one. Did you see me slide into him? <laughs> that boy did the move one. I was kind of losing a little faith in what I was doing. You know? That bite at least helped me. Oh, he ruined my sprinter bait too, so that's less than ideal. He hit it like they were supposed to hit it though. Rolled it up there by a cypress tree. <laughs> I just got to get in gear, man. And I got early check in today, so. I gotta like really put it in here and get the party going, man. Uh, so I caught three solid bass off the shad spawn. Two, two and a half pounders. You know, just something to get me started. Just to, just to get the day going in the right direction. I felt like if I could get three before, you know, 9, 9.30, that if I flip the rest of the day, if I just, if I put that flipping stick in my hand and I just, and I just focused on what I was doing, I felt like I could easily get three to five more bites the rest of the day. So getting those three early on, one on a spinner bait, one on a swim jig, or two on a spinner bait, one on a swim jig, that kind of kind of let me settle down and let me fish slowly once I just started, decided to put this flipping stick in my hand. already dead. Silver like that. Like how they were doing with my other bait, like with my top water, my spinner bait, and swim jig, how they like mouthing on it. They're doing the same thing with this too. Typical when it's cold like this in the water temperatures. They're probably down there spawning and they just want to move it out. They want it out of the bed. We just fished down through these paths like 20 minutes ago. There's a limit fish right there. There's a limit. Okay. Where that little bitty one out that I caught this morning. This technically, technically this was our limit fish. He's so small, I can't even get my hands on him. A little sardine, that's what we're gonna get rid of. 
All right. Well, we got five, so that's, so there's that. You know what I'm saying? Like, now we can, now I can really soak this big TRD, this giant TRD in these pads and like really just take my time and just do what I know how to do. There he is. I don't know. I don't know what he'll do. At least we're getting some bites. God, he was barely hooked. Oh, that silver one. This is paying out. This is exactly working exactly like I want it. Now, it's not the size fish that I want it, but this is exactly what I wanted to do is fish that shad spawn in the morning and then later on in the evenings move into these pads and catch bigger ones. We just got to do the catching bigger ones part, but we get bites. As long as, you, as long as you swing in the bat, you can hit a home run. If you're not swinging the bat, you might be Sammy Sosa. Keep flipping right there, baby. That one. You remember what I tell you about them isolated pads? Look at the pads. Scan to the pad. Scan to the pad. What I tell you about them isolated pads? That's where you get them at. That's when you pull out them gorditas, baby. That's where you pull out them gorditas. Brooks, this one is for you. Brooks is my three-year-old. He loves fishing, y'all. You gonna catch a big fish, Daddy? He's not a big one, but he's a medium size one. On a 34 degree day in Florida. <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright, let me show you what we're gonna trade him for though. We're trading him for. We trading one. That's what we're trading. <laughs> That's what we're trading right there. He goes in the box. Doop. Take you off the little stringer. That's what we're gonna get rid of. We always check. One, two, three, four. And five. Okay. Hey, I flipped, I flipped in that little isolated pad patch. Sent by itself. I flipped in there. I let it hit the bottom. The pad was going. <laughs> I couldn't wait to turn his head around. I blacked out. I, I, Ike Turner. <laughs> I did John Cena. You can't see me. <laughs> Only way it could get worse is if it was raining. And it is going to rain like Wednesday, Thursday, but there he is. There he is. Killed him, didn't it? Kill that
didn't practice here. I came here pre-practice. This is where one of those times where pre-practice was very valuable to me. I normally don't, but I did this time. I came two weeks before, but I didn't come in here in official practice. I just knew that this would be good, especially with the weather. So honestly, I feel really good about my decision at this point of the day. Uh, like things are working, it's clicking. I really couldn't be any happier. The only problem is, you know, it's a multi-day event. And at 1.30, 2 o'clock, I'm still catching fish, but I'm not really, I'm not leveling up. You know, I'm staying right here and I need to be, every time I set the hook, right here, right here. That's what you're trying to do every time you set the hook. And I wasn't doing that. So I decided to start kind of moving around to some alternate areas, basically like really practicing for the second day. Cause I know I really don't have that much water. I know that I don't have that much water, not that much going for myself. So I decided to move to some different areas and try to find some new places to catch fish. Move on. Let's see if uh, I might have a minute or two to hit a little bit when I get over there, but at least get back across because it is it's not blowing any softer than it was an hour ago when we came across That was probably one of the best ones I ever did. That was pretty good. You won't get another one like that today. <laughs> Ow! Now, it's either the walk of fame or the walk of shame. At the weigh them, you're either proud of yourself or you really feel a little discouraged. Jeez, that was a big one. Going in the weigh-in, you know, I felt, uh, I didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I'd knocked the doors off the place, but I did feel like, you know, I got through pretty good. Now, Harris Chain has been bad to me. I had literally the worst finish of my entire FLW Tour Major League Fishing Pro Circuit career right here on this pond. I'm not like just on top of the moon about what happened, but I'll, I'll take today and just hope that I can get a couple more bigger bites on day two. Brian Latimer out of Clemson, South Carolina. Another limit. I'm gonna start pushing on this bag a little easier because I no. did just get, dude, no. I just buried, no, I'm not even shaking you. I'm showing you. Well, I wanted history. to shake you, yeah. Look at that. You know how sore that's gonna be tomorrow, man? I don't really care. I don't feel sorry for you. You don't care you. about me at all. Be don't late. feel sorry for him at all. Limit today for Brian Latimer. Always a pleasure to have him. This guy's smiling every time I see him. 13 pounds, 10 ounces today, b yeah. I'll take it. Thank you. That's all for me on day one. That's all y'all need for day one, right? You, you, don't want, you don't want to start out too hard. You got to bring the juice on day two, <laughs> Yes, sir. Brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. How many did you catch? Seven or eight. Oh, yeah. yeah and you probably only had a couple other bites. You probably didn't like get back for 11.30, I bet. 12.30? 12.30. Holy crap. Yeah. I like that I don't know. I, I had the 13.10. That's good. They weigh a little bit more than you thought. Yeah. That'll keep you right there, ain't it? Probably be middle, I bet. But I caught 1310 maxed out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're like, Chris is like, yeah, I think I'll catch him tomorrow. I think I catch him. I'm like, no, bro, I had it in the floor. <laughs> I'm burning rubber at 13 pounds. <laughs>
1310 is what they weigh. That is not going to be like, obviously not the best in the tournament standings. There was already like an 18, a 17. My buddy Christian weighed 15, 10, 15, 11. My roommate, so we both had a solid day. And I think he caught his in like three hours. So, um, you know, I don't know. And I will say, my I was telling Christian, my 1310 today, that was me, whoop, whoop, whoop. That's me putting it in the floor. You know what I'm saying? I'm burning rubber at 1310. So, you know, that's what everything working like is supposed to. I don't know what'll happen tomorrow. I really only caught all of my fish off of one spot and then I caught a couple other keepers here and there. So, um, you know, I don't know what, I have a longer day tomorrow. I have two more hours almost, or I, yeah, two hours, not two hours, but close. Yeah, two hours more to fish tomorrow. So I'll be able to do a few other things, but um, I hope it, I hope it gets better because if it gets worse, then I could very well weigh in like seven pounds and we don't want to weigh in seven pounds. High quality rich cropper right there. Today we have a hoodie. My new show, Straight Up Fishing, that will be airing on Straight Up Fishing TV. We have a hoodie that is representative, represent, representative of Straight Up Fishing. We come in black. We come in. This is called Desert Gray. Okay, you're in the desert. This is what the gray would look like. And then you also have camouflage as well. Let me bring those out. My model was sick today. She has, uh, uh, she's sick today. Also have the camouflage, straight up fishing hoodie. These will be for sale at the way in as well as shopbelight.com. And my favorite of all, of all the apparel findings that we have. Oh, there's a couple t-shirt options. We have black, white, and black and white. But my favorite t-shirt option is the black man straight up fishing hoodie. That, that's me right there. It'd be a shirt, not a hoodie. You know, black well, yeah, it's a shirt. I got you. I got you. I'm here. It's early. Okay. Why are you doing that? This I, I like this jacket. This is a good. This is a good engine. I haven't even said anything you, yet. But you said Evan Root. <laughs> Evan Evan Root. Why would you have Evan Root on now? Because. The funny thing is, while, while Emery was in business, you never even wore Emery. Yes, I did. I'm going to give you a Mercury hoodie. I don't want Mercury. You're going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not as good. These engines look the best. You have one on your Pathfinder, don't you? No. No? No. Oh, you don't. You don't. <laughs> yeah, it broke. <laughs> oh, it broke. <laughs> now, we got, now we got a Mercury. Really? Cam's, like, keep, Cam's keeping, it, keeping it going strong. Yeah. Literally, nobody's walking around with Emery hoodies. I wanna be, I wanna look at this fool. Come on. He's now. keeping the name look alive. Look at this. Yeah. Look at, look at He's wearing it doing like you think it's a throwback. Yeah. It is not a throwback. <laughs> a throwback. Not, it's not even cool. It is cool. You don't like how this looks? No. Feel this material. Mark my location. Mark your location. I don't know which one is was easiest or best. On day one, I was boat number three. It seems like anytime you get an early boat number, you ain't got nothing to run to. I did this time. I had somewhere I wanted to go being boat three. Now, the reverse of that, when you're boat number three on day one, you're third to last on day two. Like you darn near last. I wasn't really that upset about it because even though you last, you get almost two hours more fishing. You, you, on blast off, you're probably only 10 minutes behind boat, 10 to 15 minutes behind boat one or two, but I get to fish two more hours. So I'm gonna need them two more hours because I don't have much to fish. So I'm gonna use them two more hours. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have that falcon. 
Woo woo! I paid five dollars a gallon for gas this week. I'ma burn it all out. Burn it down. I'ma burn the gas. I'ma be blowing gas out the back of the exhaust. How much I'ma run it today? Because with two and a half more hours, that might give me that little bit of time to find an extra five pounder, three pounder, four pounder, whatever I need to upgrade to get to day three. If I go to a popka, they run a little bit bigger. The winds calmed down. I didn't go to the popka yesterday because it was so windy, but it's calmed down a good bit today. And my buddy went to a popka. He said only six boats went. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna fish here till 11, 30, 12, and then go there. Doing the same thing, just flipping pads. I know that seems like a long way to go for that, but that's the only place that I feel like I got paths where I can catch fish. I decided to uh, to make a run to a popka. I tried all of my stuff that I fished yesterday. Nothing was really popping good, which is honestly kind of expected. I didn't really think that uh, that I would go in there and whack them on the same places that I that I caught them yesterday. So I was prepared to make another move, but the wind has calmed down considerably since the last two days. And the, re the main reason I didn't go to a popka yesterday is because of the wind. So it's calmed down. I feel like the areas I'll be able to get in there and flip really, really good. I did catch three, you know what I mean? They're three small ones. But um, if I go over there and catch two fives, you know, we'll, we'll have a, we'll end the day. We'll be fishing tomorrow. So that's the goal. I don't know, I just feel risky today. I feel like, let's just try it. I mean, what do you got to lose? I really don't have much to lose. I don't have much else to fish in Harris. So we're just gonna make the long run now at 10.30. And I should be fishing by 12. That gives me one, two, three, four. Four hours, four o'clock, I probably need to be running back. So four hours. I think we can get some damage done in that, that amount of time. 
All right, we, we just got here to the lock and it's closed. I guess he's going down there to open it, I hope so anyway. We are about 50 minutes into the ride, 55 minutes into it. And I think it's a 20 minute lock or 10 minute lock. So I should be fishing in like an hour and uh, 10 minutes, hour at the most, maybe an hour. So we need to give ourselves an hour 30, an hour 45 to get back. So if I leave, we weigh in at 5.30, 4, about 3.50, I probably need to start heading back. I just, uh, there's a lot of no wakes. And then there's a lot of areas you could run that I didn't even know you could run. So, uh, that's always good. <laughs> All right, Ron, good luck, buddy. It's so small. No, oh, come on, really, bro? What's up with that? Yeah, that's all it is. It's just, you're just taking my bait, man. Just about probably close. That's what we needed some Disneyland bass. There he is. Why is it so small? I don't know why it's so small.
Oh shit, that's a big one. Oh yes. Can get the swim jig out of that grass. <laughs> that's two, yeah, probably two and three quarters. That was Shane Lineberger. I've just been, you know, tussled just to catch some fish. This shit stays in here the whole time, but you just don't know, man. Imagine what that probably looked like coming from three miles, four miles across. somewhere I guess did the best I can uh, the best I could I um, thought I'd catch a lot bigger fish over here on on a pop pit than I did I think the wind really affected it when we had that cold front this week you know I still caught a lot of fish once I got here I just felt like what I was fishing over in Harris was just spent and I didn't, I know there's another limit over there to get me to the cut in Harris, but I didn't have confidence in the way that you probably need to fish to catch the fish in Harris. So I ran that pop to the fish my style, but you know, flipping, doing a swim jig, chatterbait, that kind of thing. And um, man, I got the bites, but it just didn't work out. It didn't, I didn't get the right size bites. They forgot that part. I don't, I don't know how they forgot that part about what size it'd be. <laughs> they forgot that part, didn't they, Paul? <laughs> yeah, like I probably still caught another, uh, I don't know, eight to ten, eight bites or so, I guess, if I had to guess once I got here. If any one of those bites could have been a five plus, we could have leveled up. But it was still fun, especially at the end, throwing my swim jig around the grass. Honestly, I kind of wish that I would have uh, came and spent like all my time over here in the canal looking back 
I actually looked for that during practice because I knew it was going to be cold. Honestly, I wish I spent more time fishing that canal. I wish I never went to the lake. I think I could have caught what I needed fishing that canal. There's some solid fish there. But I just didn't have the time. At this point, I don't have the time and I need to run back to launch. I need to at least get on the other side of the lock because I don't know how much pleasure boat traffic is going to be in these canals that I have to idle through to get back to launch. When I get back to launch, I'm 25 minutes early. So I'm like, I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, you know, I can hit one last spot before I go in today. And I hit the place I started off this morning. I'm sorry, folks, my SD card was full. Wasn't able to get any of the catches on my GoPro, but I pull into this canal and within 10 flips, I call up three times. And I'm thinking any time, any moment, I'm going to set the hook. It's going to be a five pounder. I'm going to make the day three cut and I'm going to be King Kong on top of the mountain. I just kept upgrading ounces and not pounds like what I needed to. So when I left Apopka, I left with about nine pounds. I did upgrade two more or three more times and work my way up to 11 pounds for the day. And, you know, it was fun. I had fun today. I really did. I tried everything that I got from pre-practice to official practice. I used every last bit of it to get what I got out of this tournament. How are you, sir? I'm about as good as I look. I heard that. <laughs> I'm going to start using that, too. Yeah. Everybody I didn't like, have oh, nothing else to say. Terrible, huh? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thanks a lot. They're like, you're going to be like, you're doing like a three today is what they'll tell me, man. Yeah, maybe one and a half some days. It just depends on what time of day it is, you know. Three at least now. Come on. Be like, you're like a nine, bro. All right. right I'll take that. I'll take a nine. 13, 10 yesterday, limit today for B-Lat goes 11 pounds, nine ounces. So it got a little stingy on you out there, buddy. Yeah, man, I just didn't have a big one today. I caught just as many fish as yesterday. Um, just didn't, I had one four pounder yesterday, but I mean, it was fun. I, I fished hard, I fished my way, which might've been a mistake, but uh, you know, it is what it is at, at this point. Sometimes it's real fun though, when you go out there and you make a lake conform to you though, like you feel like you're like really done something, you know? That's why I am a 1.5 on a 10 scale right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. See you later, have a great day. Right sir. on. Good to see you, both. Yes, sir. 25, three. All righty. Hey, Scotty. Hey, all right, Scotty. All right, righty, Scotty. All right, be loud. Yes, sir. Right, hey, how are y'all? So maybe this tournament wasn't what, um, what I designed it to be just yet. Keep in mind, every year I come here, I learn a little bit more. So next time we come to Harris Chain, I know more than I did when I came this time. So it's not at all a complete failure here. I'm just really curious about some of the things I could have done. I'm really curious to like just set with these emotions for a minute. But there's a silver lining to what's going on. My roommate, Christian, is leading the event this week. He caught 22 pounds today. He had 15 something yesterday. 
and 22 today. So Christian's leading the event after weighing 22 today. I'm going to be honest with you. People are sleeping on my man. Christian is going to give us a lot of trouble on the Major League Fishing Pro Circuit this year. He's probably going to win this event, most likely. I don't know yet. The event's not over. There's still two more days. Christian's out there fishing right now. And um, I, don't, I don't think people realize how good a fisherman he is, how intuitive he is, how confident. My man said that he was going. He told me, he's like, I think I can catch him. And when you hear Christian say, when he drops that line right there on you, I think I can catch him. Get ready. He's going to catch him. He's going to back it up. So um, even though this event didn't go like I wanted it to, I'm like, I'm really hoping that Christian can win because I know what a win does for your career. It really, on the business side, it pushes it, things to another level, but mentally it takes you to another level. And so if he builds on the confidence that he already has, uh, you're talking about like some once in 30 years type of angler I think he really has the potential to be. So everybody tune into the next vlog where we get to talk about Christian holding up the big check and the trophy.